People who like to eat say they have a seafood diet. They see it and they eat it. I know it's corny, but it's gonna be delicious. So stick around as we make a bunch of delicious seafood recipes right here on Savoring Our Faith. Okay, what we're gonna be doing today is making a uh, seafood, which is gonna actually taste like it. Sometimes when people get fish, it kind of winds up looking and even tasting like chicken nuggets because they bread it, they fry it, or they bake it, and you kind of lose the essence of the beautiful, fresh, almost sweet seafood quality to it. And we've got some beautiful snappers that we're going to be uh, kind of cooking up. And, and on one of these, I asked them to leave just a little bit of the fin right in place, because that's gonna tell me whether or not I'm finished cooking this fish perfectly. Fish recipe number two, tilapia. And we're gonna do a simple, very simple preparation of this fish, but the sauce itself is going to be so, so good. So we're gonna have to make the stuffing for all this, so let's get this together real quick, okay? Uh, inside this fish, we're going to infuse not only some minced um, rosemary, we're also gonna stick a rosemary leaf into it as well. We're also going to pound out and mince some garlic as well. And I don't care if it's gonna be super mashed because it's gonna be all blended up anyway. And so let's get this together. In this fish, we're also going to put some salt, some pepper, and then I'm gonna actually create a bed of some uh, potatoes mixed with some onions and even maybe some chopped roasted, uh, some, some carrots as well to kind of give a, a nice little, how shall I say, an earthy quality and texture because instead of meat and potatoes, it's gonna be seafood and potatoes. Now when we're mincing this all up, you don't have to be super, super precise because this is basically gonna serve as an aromatic for the fish anyway. But I wanna make sure that it's cut at least fine enough so that you're not getting one big honking piece of garlic because that would actually kind of ruin the delicate nature of the seafood. So, mincing the garlic with the rosemary to make it easier for distribution. I've got my oven reheating at, preheating at about a 400 degree temperature. And we know that it's kind of high, but with fish like this, that is a-okay. So, off to the side you go. Let me chop up some of my root vegetables. I'm even going to leave the uh, skin on these carrots. And we're just gonna do some rough chops on them, you know, a little bit on a bias. They don't have to be perfectly uh, the same size and uniform because they're gonna roast up. That means some pieces are gonna caramelize more than others. That's okay because it'll not only create beautiful texture, it'll also give some great, great color and of course, flavor. All of these to complement the fish, no doubt. Okay, now that we've got this all set up, Here's what we're gonna do. Also, I've got an orange here that uh, I'm using, which will also give a nice citrusy flavor to the fish itself. And we're just gonna have these out so that when they get inserted into the cavity of the fish, it'll almost fan out. And then we're also going to use a little bit of lemon zest as well. So two types of citrus. One is going to be more concentrated with the zest itself. And I notice what I'm doing. I'm putting it in with the, um, the aromatics, namely the rosemary and the garlic itself. But I'm gonna use the juice of the orange to enhance the sweetness of the fish. Now obviously, obviously, fish is a Christian reference. You all know that from previous recipes where we've kind of given the quote as to what the word fish is in uh, Greek. Um, Jesus Christus, who you stay is soter, and it basically means Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. I'll do more talking a little bit. I know I gotta get this fish in there because it'll take about 25, 30 minutes to cook this whole. And you can see we got a beautiful, fresh piece of fish here with the eyes that are pretty clear, and, um, and it doesn't 
smell bad. In fact, it smells like a beautiful fresh ocean air. And I've got to score this about every two or three inches to help cook down until we get down to the bone. And this is going to help cook the fish very evenly, scoring on both sides. So basically allowing your knife to go straight through the bone, but not all the way through it, about an inch apart. We're going to do the same thing with this other one. We're going to drizzle a little olive oil, season it with salt and pepper. It's kind of interesting because, you know, fish is already salty enough, uh, but it shouldn't be super, super salty. And that's why we're going to actually allow um, it to kind of roast in its own juices and its own flesh, okay? And that'll kind of balance out some of the seafoodness with the, uh, with the sweetness of the meat. Okay, so here we go. Let's get some salt seasoning the inside. You say we're not gonna be super aggressive with the seasoning because we want the, the, the flavors to kinda come through and so what I gotta do is not only just put a little bit in there, I gotta make sure that I spread it around. On the skin as well. Woo, that almost got me there. You gotta be careful when you're working with the fish because the, the fins themselves have these super sharp points. And I guess they would be used for protection at one point, but they also, um, they're sharp. So, you know, it, it can kind of hurt. So you gotta watch yourself. Into the cavity will go our aromatics, okay? And we're just going to kind of put that all in there. Does it need to be absolutely beautiful? Not necessarily because like I said, we are going to be cooking this whole and we're going to be filleting it and just basically deboning it. But into this also will be a cap into the cavity. Just some fanned out orange slices. Fanned out orange slices. And guess what we're gonna do with the rest of these things? Something beautiful. Let's get a little bit of olive oil in here. Spreading it all out even using your hands. Now let's layer out some of these. Just putting it all out, spreading it out. And why are we doing this? Well, because we want these to roast, no doubt, roast all the way. And at the same time, let's make sure nothing goes to waste. Do you see how simple this is? Gosh, some of the different preparations for this allow you to be creative. In fact, there are going to be some places that are going to wrap this fish up in a parchment. Now, why am I doing the onions? Well, because I want to actually cut out some onions, put it on here, let that roast, make for a very delicious, you know, the sweetness of the onion will certainly complement the sweetness of the fish. And we're going to be ready to cook this up in just a moment. But let me get these onions all chopped up. You know, when uh, Christ calls us fishers of men, it's because we swim in schools, don't we? Uh, we kind of join in with the people of the same, I don't know, the same preferences for, uh, for, that we have. Onions get chopped up. And therefore, if one member in your family is caught up in the love of God, then guess what? Technically, the rest of your family should be kind of caught up in that school of faith as well. This is so simple. Look, I'm just simply rubbing this all out, putting this on top. And why am I doing this? Not only for flavor, but because I'm also creating a little bit of space between the pan, which is gonna get super hot, and the fish itself. And in the space, you'll have a little bit of air to help cook the fish. At the same time, make sure that it doesn't overcook in its own juices. One fish down, you can see what I'm talking about and then the other fish down. I'm gonna put it on the other side. And the only other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get a little bit of aluminum foil, two pieces in fact, to cover up the tail so that it doesn't burn too quickly. Because obviously there's nothing to it. And then we're gonna remove it, serve it whole. I know it kinda freaks people out to see your food looking at you before you eat it. But this is not only beautiful, it's rustic, and honest to goodness, this is kind of the way Jesus ate it. So into the oven, it goes.
Now I'm just gonna do a quick little cleanup and show you another fish preparation which is absolutely delicious. Our Lord teaches us that He has a great rapport, a relationship to the ocean. Even though He was a carpenter, He spent a lot of time at the shore of the seas, calling fishermen to be fishers of men, calming the waves, and even walking on water. And He even was able to control the amount of catch of fish that the disciples would eventually experience to prove that He is the Lord of Lords. He is the one who rules heaven, earth, and even below the seas. Okay, as that fish is continuing to roast, I actually threw in some uh, fingerling potatoes in there too. Just chopped it all up, throw it in there, season it with salt and pepper. It'll roast you know, easily with the fish. And, and while that's continuing to cook, fish recipe number two tilapia or tilapia. No, it's actually tilapia. And we're going to do a simple, very simple preparation of this fish. But the sauce itself is going to be so, so good. The tilapia, when I actually went to the Holy Land, they said that this was the fish that Jesus caught. And I'm thinking, mm, I don't know if they called it tilapia. It could also mean it was maybe a form of a St. Peter's fish. And whatever it is, I don't care. It was good. The tilapia itself is very flaky, so you don't want to overcook it, and it takes on all of the flavors that you put into it. So what we're going to do is keep the preparation of this tilapia super simple. And here we go. Just heating up a pan. I'm going to make it large enough so that I can put about two or three fillets, and then when they're cooked on either side, I'm going to use a little cookie rack here and a little baking sheet to put it right on top to let it rest as I use the drippings and the juice from this, the, the, the uh, fish itself as a flavoring profile for the sauce, which is going to be poured on top. Absolutely fantastic. So for this, we try to keep, again, the seasoning very simple with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper on both sides. You know, if you don't want these big flecks of pepper because you don't want to ruin the presentation, simply use white pepper. It'll change the flavor just slightly, but it's still pretty good. And this sauce is going to be pretty typical, almost like a Meunier sauce, which is going to be a, a type of a butter with capers on it. It's delicious with sole, uh, but it's going to be pretty good with the tilapia as well. So again, simple seasoning, salt, pepper. We'll wait till this gets hot, sear this over, Cook this out and we gotta make sure we get the right utensils for it too as we allow this fish to cook. And what you wanna do is make sure that you don't overcook the fish. The white fish can stand to be uh, on the medium, you know, side of the temperature. And we'll see if it's hot enough. Not just yet. Oh, yeah, actually, it's getting there. And what we're going to do with the sauce, you'll see, is just going to be throwing it all into the pan and allowing the flavors to kind of just congeal, pouring it right on top, or even better, using the sauce as a base for the plate. All right, so here we go. This is getting ready to cook. You'll see that uh, sometimes it might separate as they're kind of the fishmongers kind of clean it and fillet it, and this might fall off. This piece is certainly going to get cooked before this piece is because of the different um, size of it all, but that's okay. Sometimes people want to get really picky. They'll cut right along the bloodline, and they'll only use the thicker pieces, and they'll use this almost like to deep fry it in some beer batter to make some, some, like a, some fish stick, so to speak. Okay, so we'll get four of these pieces in here. Cook on each side about a minute or actually about two to three minutes on each side. While we do this, we're going to make sure that we get all of the rest of the ingredients all lined up. Butter, we've got some lemon, we've got some olive oil. I'm going to mince a little bit more garlic, pepper, caper, lemon, and we've already used this, but this will show up for garnish. That's the rosemary. And we're also going to allow some of the uh, tomatoes that I've diced up to steam as well. You know, when we 
think about fish and the whole scriptural references to it, the fact that God calls us to be fishers of men. I also think that fish was used in the scripture, at least in Luke's gospel. After the resurrection, he breaks into, doesn't even break in, he gently walks through the door where the disciples were uh, celebrating, actually, where they celebrated the Last Supper, but where they were then hiding for fear of the persecution after Jesus rose from the dead. And what does Jesus say to them in order to prove that he truly rose? Have you anything to eat? And they give him fish, and he ate it in front of them. That is pretty awesome. To know that what we're eating, he ate too. So mincing out this garlic, and what we want to do is mince this finely because we want to almost create a little bit of a paste with this that's going to be in the sauce itself. So garlic is going to get minced and then, you know, slide your knife along it. This is definitely cooking through. You can see that it's certainly cooked out, probably taking on a little bit of color. Not just yet, probably stand a little bit more. In fact, if I turn the heat up even higher, it'll definitely take on some color. Flip it over, place it on here, and then we will make sure that we've got the rest of the sauce as well. So, let me just cut some of these out right now. So that makes it real easy at the very end of the day to present, plate, prep, and eat. Feast with your eyes, and what you see is what you get, and today, you're gonna see seafood. There we go. I think this is ready. Very good. A Little bit of color. Maybe we could stand a little bit more. If you wanted to get some color, that definitely has a little bit more. You could just easily crust it with some panko breadcrumbs. All right. Very good. And then another set. Here we go using the side of the pan to flip it over. Let's give this about another two minutes. I'm gonna do the second batch and then we'll also be ready to make the sauce super quick. Seafood is certainly a unique type of food. Who would ever think to go into the water and pull something out, roast it and eat it? Well, we know that Jesus did. In fact, after the resurrection, the thing that he would eat to prove that his, he experienced a bodily resurrection was to eat fish. In the upper room and even on that beach, he had fish roasting for his disciples. A real sign of faith was Jesus eating seafood. Okay, I've got these fillets cooked up. It only took about two to three minutes on each side, and you can see that I was able to achieve some nice caramelizing on the fish, some nice crusting in this same pan because it has some of the drippings of the fish, or at least the pan is seasoned with the fish. I'm gonna put in about four tablespoons of uh, butter. Let that, because butter and fish is kind of go, butter and seafood go great, you know, like that drawn butter that you stick the, uh, the lobster tails in, absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna kind of season the butter or flavor the butter with these lemon slices. Throw in the garlic as well. Let's add some hot pepper flakes to it because the fish again is so mild, maybe this little burst of heat will break out even more of the flavor. And so also we're gonna add a little bit more olive oil, just a little bit more, okay? some lemon juice. And now here's what we're gonna do to give it some bright freshness. Some capers as well. Already enough salt in this, so there's no need to add any more salt to this whatsoever. And for a little bit of some sweetness, just a little bit of, here you go, and some color as well. Some, just some spears of some tomato, including a little bit of that juice from the water. Let this all kind of cook gently together. Absolutely fantastic. You know, some people would even add a little bit of white wine to this. That'll be delicious, but there's no need because here's what we're gonna do now. 
on the side of this, as this is continuing to cook down, just wilt. Notice what I did, I pushed it off to the side because I'm gonna use a little bit of spinach here. Wilt it down just a little bit because now we're gonna be ready to plate fish dish number one. And here's how it's gonna look. Taking some of the wilting spinach, we are going to use this as the base for the fish dish. This is so fantastic. Fresh, bright, you don't need much more, really. If you wanna add some starch to it, maybe some crusty bread, but that's all you need. Some wilting spinach, there you go. That's what I want, just to coat the spinach and just a slight wilt. I don't want it to be, how shall I say, completely mushy. We're not doing cream spinach, although that would be pretty good too. And you know, there's, a, there's like a, a thought or a movement afloat that you would never put any like cream with any of the seafood. That's at least what they do in Italy. Uh, however, they're starting to expand their horizons. I'm starting to see a little bit more of it. Okay, now that this is done and these flavors are starting to come together, let me make a little bit of room for myself and let me do some plating. So, move these out of the way and watch what's gonna happen next. Take these beautiful fillets. Let's take a fillet, and of course this is how I do it, <laughs> using my knife. Let's put one and then two. Oh my goodness gracious. That's a masterpiece in and of itself. But wait, there's more. We're gonna just take a spoon, take some of the drippings here, Take some of this beautiful sauce. Let's layer out a few of these, uh, few of these tomato spears just right on top, huh? And then guess what we're gonna do? Take this beautiful simple glaze, maybe a couple lemons, peels, and slices on there. And guess what? Just drizzle a little bit more of this right on top. You don't need a lot. You don't need to, you know, look, the fish was already swimming in its own water. We pulled it out of it. You don't need to drown it again. In fact, what we wanna do is just highlight it with some flavors from that simple pan drippings of sauce. And there you go, a feast for the eyes. See it and eat it, what a diet that will be. Now, what we're gonna do is just check on the roasted fish and see where we're coming along. It might need a few minutes longer, and as long as you know that you can uh, pull out one of the bones from the fins, then you know that it's cooked perfectly. It just comes right out. And let's see what we got. Ah, yes. Definitely looking good. Let's give it a try. At this point, halfway through it all, I drizzled some olive oil on top of it. Let me make a little bit more room here. The flesh itself has turned white. I think we're in actually a pretty good position here. Let's see if I can pull this one. Oh yeah, I pulled it right out. That bone comes right out, so that basically means we are almost done. When I say almost done, because I want to achieve a little bit more caramelizing on this, not just on the fish itself, but even on the vegetables themselves. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually crank this broiler up to a little bit of high, wait till we get a little bit more crusting, and then you'll see just how beautiful, beautiful this really is. So now that we've got it set on broil, I'm gonna return it, wait till it turns nice and kind of toasty. You're gonna to see a little bit more charring on it, which means not only is it definitely cooked, it's gonna be even more flavorful. Seafood is one of those unique foods that will certainly teach you patience. I look at fishermen and how they just basically have to wait. Certainly there is technique but there's also a great virtue of patience to wait for that perfect catch. And you know what? That's what Jesus is doing for us as well. He's waiting for us to be caught up in his love. 
So I know that the fish is cooked. It was cooked when I put it in, but I put it in the broiler and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It made it not only, uh, how shall I say, even more seasoned and cooked, it kind of charred some of the skin. And that's exactly what we wanted. Oh my gosh, so perfect, so beautiful. And what we're gonna do to plate all of this is uh, we're gonna take some of the bottom parts here, the, the, the potatoes that are cooked perfectly, some of the charred uh, aromatics that are on the bottom here, some of the onions that are already cooked as well. Just gonna layer it right on top. I mean, right on the plate itself. Put some of that orange. This is rustic home cooking meal, my friends. This is awesome. And this is just one of those one, I guess one pan wonders where you simply take the fish itself. This aluminum foil certainly protected it from burning. I'm now gonna just take this and gently, as gently as I possibly can. This is gonna require some effort here, but I think I can do it. Yes, place that. Oh gosh, that is absolutely fantastic. Put a little bit of that rosemary right as a garnish on the bottom to show what the seasonings are. And you've got two perfectly cooked seafood dishes that will make your mouth water. And um, hopefully, if your family really is swimming in the same school of faith, this will be a catch for the entire family, but really a catch for God. So we'll see you next time on Savoring Our Faith, only on EWTN.